Alrighty, everyone. It's Q&A time. It's that time of the week. You know it. So thanks for submitting your questions on Twitter. At OTR Essential is the Twitter handle. Makes sense since that's the name of the freaking show. So every Saturday I do one of these Q&As. When I start asking for questions, you post them. It's that simple. Let's get started. Michael Corbin asks, Thoughts on The Undertaker's respect, respect the flag, easy for me to say, propaganda shirt. Ah, Christ. About as dumb as Undertaker versus John Cena at this year's WrestleMania. How about that? We got you to respect the flag. Shut up. Respect the flag, my ass. And no, it's not just some simple, stupid SJW crap talking about how that flag represents so many bad things. Because it freaking does. But it, but it goes across racial spectrums, too. Like, there's a lot of white working class people that sit there and worship that damn flag. Do you not realize the system that is in place that keeps you down to a power structure that ultimately screws so many of us over? Why the hell would you be proud of the damn thing? All this sanctimonious crap. That's what it is, is crap. And that shirt is crap. And I won't be buying it. And I'll let the flame wars in the comments with a bunch of stupid political thoughts go through. What happened to comments as a logic? <laughs> Not in this country. As we can see. Real Adam F. asks, your thoughts on the Bullet Club having their own live event this year? No matter what, it's a win. Either they're able to get to whatever their goal is, and they have a successful show, and they make money, and it's great. Or, they don't meet their goal, the show is stupid, and I've got great content to mock them for. Either way, win-win for everybody, or somebody. No matter what. Cool if it works, great if it doesn't. Mr. Mike Laws, do you think All In 2018 will accomplish the 10,000 goal? If they have it in the right market and they understand how to properly promote the event, they could. There's a big difference between being a wrestler and being a promoter. And just putting your name on the marquee for those guys is not going to be enough to sit there and guarantee yourself 10,000 people. And that's just the way it is. They could get there. They need to be, I don't know, where is the show? I don't know. I don't really care. But if it was in a New York, in that type of market then maybe they could. I don't know what the venue is. Uh, there are a lot of things at play. The time of year that they're having it, I don't know because I don't care um, where that venue is. Again, I don't know. I don't care. You guys can clue me in, please. Give me, the, give me the details. But if they do it in a second-rate market, they're making it really hard on themselves to do 10,000 people, especially with this just being an out-of-the-blue show. I'm not saying it can happen. not saying it won't happen. It's just not as easy as they might think it is. Owen Fitch, when are you doing a no DQ panel? When they freaking ask. No, all these other ham and eggers and pieces of crap that wrestling websites add to their roster and so on and so forth. All these years later, and not one wrestling website has ever come to the Schleg Daddy for any damn thing. How stupid is that? It's ridiculous. Aaron and the no DQ crew, they want the Schleg Daddy on a panel, then they can ask. I'm not going to seek a handout at this point in time. They can come ask me to be on. And of course what happens ultimately is they freaking don't. And you get a bunch of jabronis. Not just necessarily with them. But just in general. A bunch of nerds. A bunch of fucking lames. A bunch of WWE apologists. A bunch of idiots. That fill these wrestling websites with garbage ass content. Period. And I defy you to prove me wrong any other way. Chase Holland. Will you still be attending WrestleMania this year? It's still a plan. No, I haven't bought my ticket. I don't know if it's going to happen. That is still the goal. That is still the hope. We shall see. Ben RFC 1872. Who's the dark horse to win this year's Royal Rumble? Great question. Haven't really thought about it, honestly. That is a great question, though. I, I, th I think I saw some early betting odds where Shinsuke was a favorite. I've, I Somebody tweeted that uh, the suspect sissy was a top four kind of uh, odds favorite. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, Shinsuke winning it would be a dark horse because it wouldn't be Roman Reigns. So I would say anybody other than Roman Reigns winning the Rumble the way things are going right now is going to be a significant dark horse. Significant dark horse. 
Mid Carter J. Will we see a retro review of the first ever Raw episode? Great idea. Is it on the WWE Network? Is it on YouTube? Let me know in the comments. If I can find it, and I'm sure it's out there somewhere, I think that makes perfect sense heading into Raw's 25th anniversary to take a look back at the first ever Raw episode for the next retro review that's coming up on Thursday. Makes perfect sense to me. MIM Arsenal. Thoughts on Austin Aries returning to TNA. Number one, I thought it was called Impact Wrestling. Number two, I didn't honestly know he had returned. Number three, maybe I will try and catch up on the product. Maybe. Probably not. Because I'm sure as soon as he's there, people like Lashley, people like Ethan Carter III will be departing. So it's a net loss and screw that company. Victor Tran 562. Who would you like to see as surprise entrance in this year's Royal Rumble? I've got two of them that I'm holding firm to. Number one is Eugene. And if you don't like it, eat it. Period. Eugene. We need Eugene in this year's Royal Rumble. We've been saying it every year. We need it this year. Number two, Batista. Want to talk about a dark horse to win the Rumble? There you go. Give me Batista versus Brock at WrestleMania, not freaking Roman versus Brock. Ah, fooly on that. Shar Shar, is it time for the Cowboys to release Des Bryant? Is it time for the Cowboys to release Des Bryant? I'll answer that with an obvious question. Did Zeke just serve a six-game suspension this past season? The answer is yes. Especially if he thinks he deserves anywhere near the salary that he is getting. The fact is, as Des Bryant looks like a shell of his former self of absolutely zero explosiveness, he spends more time bitching on the sidelines than actually getting open on the field. So hell yeah. You need to clear some cap space. You're not going to miss that much if you get rid of him, honestly. You're really not. If he ain't willing to play with you in terms of the Cowboys organization, that front office, then he could choose to play somewhere else in 2018. Ahmed. Vader or Bam Bam, who should be in the Hall of Fame first? Vader because he's still alive, and honestly, as much as a fan of Bam Bam as I was back in the day, Vader was bigger, did more, had a more significant, consequential career around the world. No offense to Bam Bam, but Vader's still here. Vader did more. Vader should be in. I don't see why they both couldn't go in this year. I don't see why they wouldn't. You know, because if we're going to keep it to one dead guy a year, well, Bam Bam checks off that check mark on the list. And Vader's still alive. Andrew Harrington, did you see here about Impact Wrestling changing to the four sided ring? No, I didn't actually. Does it matter? Does it matter? Because honestly, the six-sided ring ties into the old company, the old name. So why should they be six sides anymore? Especially if they're not going to make that an integral part of their identity, then go back to the four-sided ring. Whatever, who cares? Horror Movie Review 73. Did you enjoy Kane's Reign of Terror in 2003? No. While on the surface it seemed like it was a cool thing... It ultimately didn't result in him becoming World Heavyweight Champion, so it was stupid. They took the guy's mask and couldn't even give him the world title. It was dumb. Praise God, Ugga. Lord Hater, what percentage on WWE doing something significant with Rusev? Meaning, what is the percentage that WWE does something significant with Rusev? Um, 50-50. I'll be fair to the company. Because he's moving merch. I mean, the crap was on back order, which is probably more of a reflection of they didn't have enough shirts made because they didn't think it was going to sell than actually a legit sellout and a legit back order, if you get what I mean. There's got to be demand there. I know I want to order a shirt and I have it yet because it was on back order. I need to check again and see if it still is because if not, I'm buying that bitch. That said, 50-50. Because ultimately, it was something he threw out there. It's something that's kind of organically gotten over on its own. And WWE can either A, choose to roll with it, seeing the potential to make some money, or B, squash it because they didn't come up with it. Henceforth, they're not behind it because they're stupid. It's one of the two. When in doubt with WWE and today's product, lean towards the negative. 
I know you have all these knob schlobbers and these apologists that seem to get the biggest audience for wrestling videos today, but the truth is, when in doubt, skew negative with WWE. Because their product is terrible, period. Der David Murgon, do any of WWE's women have it factor like Lita, Trish, or China to get massively over like they did? No. No. No, 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 no. Hell no! Like, who in that company, in terms of the women on Raw or SmackDown, has the ability to become an equivalent star to a Lita or a China, let alone a Trish? Give me a break. Hell no. Where's the love ask? How's Summer? I miss that dog. Summer is doing just fine. And don't worry, you'll be seeing her too. And if some of you don't like it, kick rocks. She'll be in videos for like 30 seconds to a minute. It makes sense. It's about Roman. Shut up. Charles McCain. Thoughts on doing reaction videos or movie reviews on either channel? I don't watch enough movies and I don't go to the movies enough to justify doing movie reviews and I don't necessarily have a ton of interest or see a ton of appeal to doing retro movie reviews, if I'm being honest. As far as reaction videos, here's the thing. I get where some people have have made themselves a nice niche, like the Tyrone Magnuses of the world and so forth, sitting there and doing reactions to other people's viral stuff and other people's big videos. And that's cool. That's great. Good for them. However you can get over, get the fuck over. In my case, though, I'm not for the reaction videos. I would rather get a reaction, I would rather get an audience based off of my own actual organic, natural, real, creative juices, work, what have you. I don't want to be leeching off of somebody else reacting to them. To me, that's kind of a lame way to go about it. Sorry, it's the way I feel about it. Don't like it, eat shit. But, people can do whatever they want to get over, that's cool with me. It's just not the way that the Schlage Daddy is going to do it. And unfortunately, to my detriment, I'm not going to. Probably should. Because God knows, who the hell knows why this channel can't rise up in the viewership, rise up in the subscribers. And it's just ridiculous. Absolutely, completely ridiculous. But whatever. The Schlage Daddy stands alone. Anime 54. Thoughts on Mark Cuban wanting to compete against WWE of New Japan Pro Wrestling? I did not know this is a thing. Is this actually a thing? When did this become a thing? And, and how does he want to compete with them? What type of investment is he making in them? Is this even true? I know none of this. And maybe that's my own fault, actually, uh, Anime 54, that I haven't actually brushed up on this or heard about this at all. So include me in, in the comments if you want. And the Mac Dog 714 is going to finish us off here. And it looks like with some fun stuff because God knows in wrestling we can use fun every once in a while. The first question. What does JoJo say to Bray Wyatt during sexual intercourse? <laughs> I can only imagine. Fill me up, Daddy. It's probably one of them. She probably calls him Bo, which is just all types of weird. <laughs> I wonder if she says to Bray, I didn't pay my taxes, baby. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! She's probably like, did I swallow the buzzard right, Daddy? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! I can only imagine, nasty heffa. And then what's funnier? Vince's quad tear or Batista's headbutt cell? Now, mind you, you have to specify with Vince's quad tear which one you're talking about. The most recent one was a weightlifting accident, or are we going back to the 2005 Royal Rumble, where he tore both quads at the same damn time? At a pivotal moment in the show when they had the crappy finish between Cena and Batista. <laughs> Batista's headbutt cell is classic, but Vince's double quad tear hitting the damn ring is legendary. <laughs> He's sitting there laying down, sitting down, pointing at God, 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 God. <laughs> Nothing is better than that, baby. That is funnier. That is classic. Thank you again, everyone, for sending in your questions via Twitter. 
We'll be doing this again next week. Make sure you check out some of the other content on this damn channel. There's over 15,000 subscribers. You would think three or 4,000 of you could be bothered to watch the damn video. Especially because some of them aren't that bad. Anyways, this is OTR Central, and if more now than ever, remember, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Later.